This video was sponsored by the Nick Morn Foundation. Concrete and steel production releases tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere every year, contributing to air pollution and climate change. Fortunately, there are some more sustainable materials which can be used for construction. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some alternative yet eco-friendly materials such as seaweed, mushrooms and even coffee and their practical applications in construction. Formerly used as wine stoppers or bulletin boards, in recent years, cork has been found to be one of the most sustainable building materials in the world. With eco-minded construction companies in search of more lightweight, low-cost, sustainable and versatile building materials that not only are aesthetically pleasing, but also effectively insulate and provide long-term protection from the elements, cork ticks all of the boxes. Cork is harvested from a water-repellent layer of bark on the cork oak tree, mostly grown in the Mediterranean region of southwest Europe and northern Africa. One reason that cork is so sustainable is that no trees actually need to be cut down in order for it to be harvested, and it is easy to recycle. The trees grow for 25 years until their trunks are wide enough, and then the cork can be stripped from them every nine years. Cork oak trees can live up to 300 years, and the older a cork tree is, the better quality the cork that is harvested is too. Interconnecting blocks and roof tiles made from cork can provide durability and easy assembly, while also allowing the structure to blend in with its surrounding environment. These are just a few examples of how cork has been used in building homes, hotels, studios, and exhibitions around the world. Colombia is one of the world's largest coffee producers, exporting an estimated 15 million bags of coffee beans in 2019 alone. Despite the booming business, Colombia is also unfortunately one of the world's most economically disadvantaged countries, with around 35% of its population living in poverty. This has led to many people unable to afford housing, an issue that Bogota-based construction company Woodpecker hopes to solve. By combining coffee husks with recycled plastic, Woodpecker has developed building blocks that link together around a steel frame to create lightweight and easy to install tiny homes that can serve as single family homes or classrooms for rural or more isolated areas. The coffee husk is the skin of the coffee bean that dries and falls off during the roasting process and usually ends up in landfills afterwards. It is stronger and drier than other fibers and allows for these homes, which sell for less than $5,000 each, to be pest and moisture resistant. Nearly 3,000 of Woodpecker's buildings have already been sold, and the company is working alongside the Colombian government to help house those who have been displaced due to natural disasters. For projects inside the home, Dutch designer Miki Meyer and a team of five have developed newspaper board, an original material adaptable for floorboards, hybrid furniture, shelving, concept car interiors, and more. Made from sheets of recycled newspaper glued together and layered, the pieces are then dried, compacted, sawed and sanded, giving it the look of wood grain. Due to the size and strength limitations of newspaper, newspaper wood is not aiming to act as a large-scale alternative to wood, but it does offer a potential solution to the global paper waste problem. In the UK alone, it is estimated that over 6.3 trillion tonnes of paper are thrown away every year whereas recycling can save millions of trees. Imagine a material with the potential to be the key to a sustainable future in the fields of fashion, art, food, shipping, construction, and more. Mycelium, or the tiny thread-like roots of mushrooms, may just be able to fill these big shoes. It is 100% biodegradable and compostable, yet when dried, is strong and durable enough to resist mold, water, and fire. In recent years, mycelium has been used for creating eco-conscious packaging materials, meat alternatives, and even skincare products. Now, however, mycelium compressed into bricks is one of the construction industry's most exciting and promising new building materials. Because fungi are living, breathing organisms, they self-regenerate quickly and can assemble themselves into lightweight yet solid objects in a very short time. For more precise or complex projects like insulation, mycelium can be used in 3D printing, making it the ultimate non-toxic building material. Examples of mycelium structures include the Hi-Fi in Queens, New York, 
the growing pavilion in the Netherlands created to showcase how mycelium self-assembles, and the MycoTree project in Seoul, South Korea, exhibited to show how mycelium is strong enough to act as essential structure and support for buildings while also adding natural beauty to any space. You may think of green algae as something that only grows in your local pond or river, but in Hamburg, Germany, green algae is being used to provide energy for an entire building. The photosynthesis occurring in the algae cells turns the sun's energy into fuel for the building. The algae rapidly grows within the glass panels that cover the entire building, where it is then extracted and put into a bioconverter which turns the algae into biomass. This biomass can then be used for a number of things, including a source of food for humans or animals, and it can also power cars, but its greatest ability is that it can generate electricity and heat for those living in the building. When we visited this project in 2019, we were told that the process was actually producing so much energy that it could also power the surrounding buildings too. You can learn more about this and other green projects in our green architecture video here. In the UK alone, nearly 3 billion disposable diapers are thrown into landfill each year. To tackle this issue, Canadian company No Waste are recycling diapers and other absorbent sanitary products into roof tiles. The recycling process sanitizes the waste to create two different materials. Firstly, they remove the organic fibers and use them for green energy and paper. While secondly, they extract the plastic binding these sanitary products to recycle into a variety of other products, including plastic cladding, decking, and roof tiles. Sending these otherwise disposable products to the no waste facility will save the same amount of space in the UK's landfills as 96 Olympic sized swimming pools and removes from the air the same amount of carbon dioxide as 7,500 cars. Not to mention that once they've been processed, they turn into a much needed building material. Cob is a mixture of sandy soil, clay, and straw. It is mixed by crushing the particles together by either dancing on it or using a digger. It is an extremely cheap building method. This home, for example, was constructed for just 3,000 pounds. It is one of the most eco-friendly materials of all the examples mentioned in this video, as the materials for construction can be found on the site of construction, rather than needing to be imported from elsewhere. It is also, in my opinion, the best looking material, as Cobb allows you to easily create unique home styles, curves and furniture built directly into the walls. Kenyan engineer Nezambi Mate discovered that Nairobi's plastic waste pollution was becoming a serious problem. Nairobi produces over 500 metric tons of plastic waste every single day, but less than 9% of the city's plastic waste was being recycled. Instead of waiting for the government to do something, Mate took action. Machines that Mate designed herself mix plastic and sand together at high temperatures, where the plastic, when melted, acts as a binder. The mixture is then compressed into bricks that are stronger than concrete and lighter too, which helps cut costs in shipping and makes their use in building less labour intensive. Looking towards the future, there is no limit to what Matty hopes to achieve. Seeking investors across Africa to scale her business for the whole continent, Matty hopes to pave the way for upcycling efforts around the world. Plant-based polyurethane rigid foam is manufactured from materials like kelp, hemp, and bamboo and can be used in insulation and furniture building. It is highly resistant to moisture and heat and offers protection against mold and pests. In addition to being considered more eco-friendly, some types of plant-based foam have actually been shown to improve insulation, thermal resistance, and be better protection against issues that often plague homes using typical insulation materials. On the island of Leysu, located off the coast of Denmark, homes made of roofs of seaweed dot the landscape, some of which are more than 300 years old. Apart from their humongous size, they look a lot like thatch, but seaweed is far more durable, and it reproduces itself every year in the sea, and comes ashore without any effort from humans. It is then dried on nearby fields by sun and wind, and easily carried to building sites due to its light weight. A more modern example of seaweed use in construction are these seaweed pillows, which were used as cladding for a home designed by the Copenhagen architecture firm Van Kusten. Their aim was to design a new house that combines traditional materials with 21st century construction techniques. 
That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. And if you want to find out more about sustainable design, then make sure you hit subscribe to the Going Green channel. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.